That's it looks my like an RC car, dude. <laughs> it was, man. Damn. You got you got some YD2 angle, dog. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You guys, can, you guys can make as much noise as you guys want. That's called background noise, BGN. Is that even a word? BGN. I, I don't even know. Background you, noise. You made it up just now. Yeah, you made it up. Um, what are we doing? Uh, well, I'm showing you guys around my shop. We're in Temple City, Threes Racing. A lot of people ask why it's Threes. Well, two of the Threes are here. That's Mang over there. That's one of the three. I'm Ken. This is two of the three. Uh, we have a third member of Threes Racing. Unfortunately, he's not here because he's doing some outside work. So three of us, Threes Racing. So, so, so it's super like super JDM. It's simple. like Threes Company, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? What's Threes, Threes company? company? You don't know what Threes Company is? No. It's a TV show. But anyways, oh. you're too young for that, I think. Uh, but uh, it's super JDM. Yeah. Uh, right, because it sounds JDM. I guess. Yeah. I mean, you you are Japanese. I am Japanese. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's kind of like that, you know, Japanese people and their English, they try to come up with things that sound cool without realizing what it really means. But yeah, threes racing was just so natural. And we all agree like, oh, yeah, that's like straight to the point. Simple. Sounds cool. Yeah. Let's go with threes racing. Oh, threes company. Nice. Yeah. OK. All right. Well, um, yeah, thank you for coming on to Autofocus. I'm Larry Chen. If you guys don't already know, this is Ken Gushi, professional Formula Drift driver and all around awesome guy show b-roll of him shredding super hard <laughs> this car has kind of been an evolution actually and we've seen it in a couple different stages i've seen it i think probably one of the first times you ever brought it out and i asked you i bugged you to feature it and you're like hey I, my car's ugly. I don't think you should feature it, right? And I, I keep kind of saying that I like the story. I like the fact that it's a street car. I just like the car in general. I like what you're doing. Uh, but now I feel like it's in a pretty good state because you actually just came from this versus that, right? Yeah, we did. So we shot up north uh, with Hoonigan's This Versus That show. And uh, even on the show, I was explaining that I really had no goal, no end goal with this car. It's kind of started off as a street car that I wanted to drive to and from the track because I was so tired of loading up the trailer, getting everything ready the night before, waking up early just to hook up the trailer on the truck, driving a couple hours to the track and you know, yada, yada, yada. I just wanted something that I could just start the car, hop in, drive to the track with tires in the back seat, drift a few laps, shred it out there, have fun, put everything back in the car and drive home. It's as simple as it gets. Um, but obviously, a stock form IS300 wasn't good enough, um, at least to my standards. So I wanted something with a little bit more power, hence the reason why we went with the 1JZ. Starting from that, it kind of just evolved into what it is now because, for one, the body kit, I have Ascura Garage Wide Fender Kit, only because I got hit on the rear quarter, and I didn't want to take it to the body shop to get it pulled. So instead of doing that, I just cut it up, put, slapped panels on it, and, you know, let, okay, so let's let's do a quick walk around on it. Um, so, body wise, on the outside, yep. did you just paint it yourself here? So, it may look like paint. Um, what we do here at Threes Racing is actually vinyl work. So the Integra behind you is all wrapped 100%. Uh -huh. The GS right there is wrapped 100%. Oh yeah, let's la take a look yeah. at this. So, there's so many things going there's on. There's a lot here. of yeah, yeah. One of the things that I uh, really liked right away was a couple of your liveries, the, yeah. the hoods that you have, so it goes this way, right? It does, yeah. So let me explain in order. This was 2012, our first year with Gritty Performance and Scion Racing, where we built our first FRS. Um, this livery was done by John Sabal. Everyone knows John Sabal. 
Uh, actually, all these were done by John Sabal, but um, the reason why I kept these specific hoods was because I had a lot of, uh, I guess, really good memories in these certain years. A lot of the other years, I had a bad ear, a lot of mechanical problems, so I told Kenji I'm ready to just you know, take care of that and throw them away. But anyway, 2012, 13, Fifth, uh, sorry, 15, no, 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 sorry, 14 Pikes Peak. This is 14 Pikes Peak. And then this is 2016 Formula Drift. Huh. Um, but yeah. I, I noticed that all of them are like Scion Racing. And then this is during the transition year when it was Scion Racing by Toyota Correct. because they were getting rid of Scion the brand. Right. So in 2016, Toyota had, na had announced that Scion was going home back to Toyota. So essentially they were trying to get rid of the brand. Um, Scion originally was developed to kind of attract more of the younger group or the younger demographics into the Toyota family. So starting off with Scion where there's more affordable, stylish, lifestyle, uh, trendy cars. And then we'll introduce them to the whole Toyota lineup and then eventually hopefully into Lexus. But 2016 was the year they decided, okay, well, you know, Scion did its job. There's a lot of youth in the brand now. Let's just bring it home to Toyota and call it Toyota and Lexus from now on. So you're right. That is why it says SR by Toyota, because that was the first year they announced that transition back. And now we're officially Toyota Gazoo Racing or yeah. Toyota Racing. I'm surprised you don't have the hood from your Irwindale win uh, two years ago. Yeah, I, you know what? If I even had the opportunity to buy that car off of Gretti, um, just to hold on to it, I would have. But unfortunately, you know, I'm a broke driver. I, can't, I couldn't afford it. So that car actually belonged to Gretti and uh, they sold it to a owner in Greece. So that car, it still has its original livery, original hood. It even has my name on it. So it's out there oh, driving right. in Greece. So that's kind of uh, one of the things I always like to talk about, especially with old Formula Drift guys. There are so many historic cars out there and there are collectors now that are, it's, it's, they're actually searching out for these. They're, they're kind of sought after these historic Formula Drift cars or professional drifting in general, like D1 GP cars. Could you imagine like owning the old like Kazamas? Yeah, you know, or even like the top secret S15. S15. Yeah, top, top secret yeah. S15 or like that BR. Uh, the, R32 the R, Yeah, R32. I know a lot of the guys um, in the U.S. love to collect them. You know, but uh, all across the world, because, you know, it's something that we grew up on, it, they're just worth something to us, you know, that we, we look up to them. And it's super cool that somebody actually went out and got your car. And yeah. the fact that they kept the livery yeah. and kept it in that state, because honestly, like that was such a cool event. I mean, it was a cool event for us. I'm sure it was a really cool moment for you, you know, actually winning that event. For sure. I mean, Irwindale is like, what, seven minutes east of where we are right now. It's my home course. I grew up basically drifting in the parking lots at first. And then when D1 came, we started in the inner bank. And, you know, it's always been my home course. Uh, SGV native right here. So Irwindale win was definitely special to me, especially having my family and friends around, you know, close by. Well, let's talk about some of the cars okay, here. So yeah, this yeah. one is another build that you guys did. This has a cr crazy backstory. So originally, this car belonged to my mom. Uh, my mom had driven this car for many years. It's basically a 2003 GS300. Uh, it was full original, uh, original interior. The only modification it had was Tane coilovers, only because they had designed or prototyped their coilovers on my mom's car, which is funny enough. Um, so then my... my co-partner, which he just arrived somewhere, but Bobby then bought this car off of my mom and uh, his brother was driving it around for a few years. And then eventually he was like, you know what? Forget my brother, I'm just gonna take the car back. So he got the car back and then we've been talking about building this car up for a while. So once we established Threes Racing here, he was like, this is the time to do it. Let's start on the, our project. So this was actually our very first major project here was converting a bone stock GS300 to a 1JZ swapped five speed uh, drift, drift machine, basically. It's, it's a GS version of what I made right there, minus the sequential transmission and crazy wise fat steering. But this is the same, uh, I guess, style of build in that it's simple enough for you to drive it to the track yeah. with some spares and you can drive all day and you can come back. And does the AC still work? Yeah, yeah, so what we try to focus on here is um, relatability to the general public, right? I mean, not everyone can build a thousand horsepower GR Supra spending $300,000. So uh, what we aim to do is 
build these cars that you know, anyone can relate to, anyone can afford, or almost everyone can afford, uh, while retaining the everyday necessities and luxuries like air conditioning, radio, full interior, but having the necessary power and all the equipment to go and have fun. So this car is bone stock 1JZ, it has full AC, um, everything in interior works, radio, all the luxuries, amenities. It's got a steering lock kit that we developed in-house. Um, it's basically cut knuckles, modified lower control arm, but everything you need to take it to a track from the garage, basically driving to the track to and from, having a full day of drifting, it has. Do you know any other shops that are doing this kind of work in the U.S. right now? Um, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of shops out there, but we really try to focus on you know, having something that you can enjoy driving every day because you're not going to enjoy driving a fully gutted, stripped out S13 that's like clapped out on the street on a daily basis. But something like this, like if you look at the interior, it's got full interior, oh like full All center console. Trim, yeah. And then we super clean. So, I mean, because uh, for example, this, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's a commuter car, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. For potentially, um, I don't know, just like, somebody that wouldn't want to go fast. You know, it's, yeah. it's like a, a very comfortable, it's a luxury car, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So if you want something reliable and honestly boring, really, mm -hmm. the way it came in the US, then you drive something like this. But you guys do all this stuff to bring it back to its JDM roots because yep. you could potentially, I mean, you could get something like this in Japan, close, but not with a manual transmission, right? Correct. Um, so like you said, we, we try to focus on reliability and affordability. So if you have stock, you know, 280 horsepower, you're not going to burn through tires all day long. If you have maybe four pairs, that's plenty to take this car out on track for a whole day of having fun. And so we're not trying to make monster horsepower out of these engines. Um, we try to make it enjoyable to drive on a daily basis because if you, if you put all your pride and joy money into building a car, of course you're going to want to drive it every day, right? Like, I actually drive my IS quite often, a lot more than I would drive any other car. Yeah, let's check that out. This right. um, is so cool. One of the, my favorite videos uh, from your social channels yeah. was you actually just driving this on the street with yeah. the sequential transmission. How much does that thing cost? Um, even if you have like a hookup price on it, it's easily north of 13 grand just for the box itself. So it, it, it's essentially just as much if not more than the actual chassis. Of it. It's more than the, okay, so the transmission alone is more than the IS300 with the 1JZ built. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, I mean, you know, some people might say that it was kind of dumb and, you know, stupid to do a sequential swapped streetcar, but I mean, it's always been, you know, a lot of people dream about having a sequential streetcar or at least driving a sequential on the street and it's always been a fantasy of mine so can we take a look at it yeah 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 so i've had a chance to drive uh an r34 gtr with maybe i think this transmission okay but this transmission it's it's, it's actually kind of funny how far you went to kind of make yeah it look stock or like fit it in in the stock boot location yeah i mean again that's kind of our motto here at threes racing is to just make everything work you know the way it was designed to work obviously this wasn't designed to be in a street car but you know i don't want to be looking at ugly stripped down interior especially yeah. if i'm going to be driving it on the street so i wanted everything to look nice fit nice feel nice and comfortable while enjoying a sequential transmission so it's full interior uh, AC. so this is designed for way 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 more power yeah. Right. I mean, how much power could this handle? I mean, I've been using Samsona sequentials in pretty much, you know, more of my more recent competitive Formula Drift cars. And at one point, my FRS had a thousand horsepower and this took it like a champ. So with this setup right now, I have 280 wheel horsepower. So I'm, I'm going to guess this transmission is going to outlast the entire car. Mm. Or I hope it does. But for sure, it's overkill. I mean, it's rated at more than a thousand horsepower capability or capacity so yeah if anything the car will go before the transmission does and th the good thing about it is i can always pull the transmission out and put it in any other car I mean, there's it's so widely accessible to put into different platforms engine combinations and one that especially with the support that we have in north america with samsonas uh you actually started off with a really really 
good example, I think, of the IS. Was this a automatic? No, this was the original five-speed. Um, it had a lot of miles on it. It actually had 198,000 miles when I bought it. Um, but I've been searching for, actually, so this is my third IS300, all of which were manual transmissions. Um, I sold my first two, and I had an ISF, but I was like, man, I just want to go back to a three-pedal car. So then after selling the ISF, I waited about a year, and I looked pretty much every day, every other day, to find deals on ISs. I didn't really care about the mileage because I knew I was going to do a swap. You know, all the suspension bushings were going to be out. So I just wanted something that was straight body, original five-speed, and somewhat clean on the inside, the interior, because I knew I wanted to keep full interior. I found this, like it had been posted maybe 10 minutes, 6,500 bucks. I called the guy, I was like, where are you? I wanna look, take a look at right now. I have cash in hand, let's meet up. I saw the car, I drove it around the parking lot. It had a slipping clutch, but I was like, would you take six, six grand? He's like, you know what? Okay, fine, whatever. So signed papers, boom, got the car. Okay, the first thing I did was obviously the clutch, fixed the clutch and put KWs on it, took it to the KW track day. And I think that's when you I saw remember it the first that. time, yeah, with yeah. R33 wheels. Yeah, I remember that because I specifically remember when you were drifting that hairpin, and then the the uh, uh, the corner the corner workers were like radioing in and saying, you know, oh, this guy's drifting, he's out of control. And I love your reply. You're like, oh, my foot slipped. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was like, what if I accidentally slid? He's like, well, it's kind of obvious that you weren't accidentally sliding. Yeah, especially because you initiated super early into the corner. <laughs> and you were like, it, you were like pitching it, you know, completely sideways. Um, that was a lot of fun to see. But the fact that this is not sticky, you know, dashes, like especially the ISs. I clean this. Have sticky dashes. Oh, so you yeah, clean yeah. all of this. Yeah, so there's a trick to doing these. Um, it's really easy to take out the dash panel. Um, and then you just use like a moderate amount of brake cleaner. Just take off all the rubbery goo. Uh, make it take it down to the bare panel, you sand it a little bit, prep it, primer, and flap. Ma ma wow, it actually looks really good. Yeah, yeah, it's that was amazing. one of my um, like must-dos when I get ISs, is just have a clean dashboard, because all of them except 2000, 2001s have sticky dashboards. Mm. What else did you do in the interior, just seats? Yeah, so just seats, steering wheel, obviously the shifter, um, the doubled-in head unit, but other than that, it's full uh factory yeah you got your helmets in the back ready to go <laughs> ready to party anytime yeah. the seats are perfect everything the door sill all of this is in really 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 good condition but this actually has a kind of a fun feature when you put in a reverse right yeah so um i have a reverse chime it's called a back alarm in japan but it's very popular with um big trucks because when they're backing up so if i put the reverse Where is the actual speaker? It's actually under, under here, right here. Yeah. And, and it's saying I'm, I'm backing up? Or? So it's saying I'm going to back up. Be careful. Like, be cautious. <laughs> this is the most polite IS. How funny is that? That is so exactly. cool. So that was kind of crazy because obviously putting the Samsonas on, I didn't really know how to trigger the reverse. I didn't even know how to wire up the reverse to the backup lights. So I had to like research, take voltage measurements from the transmission, from the signal of the gear indicator. It's like, man, how am I gonna trigger the reverse light? So once I found that, I just added a relay, hooked it up to the reverse alarm, because I knew I wanted to keep this back alarm. Yeah. That was like a must have <laughs> feature, even with the Sam <laughs> Samsung sequential. Well, it's funny because the, uh, the sequential transmission, th that was, it was never meant to be in a street car, right? They don't, do they even, is that even they a thing for them? It. No. Huh. Um, for the most part, I mean, yeah, th there's a few Samsonas equipped street cars. I know of one Canadian R34. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I drove. Oh, is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, I, yeah, yeah, he did his before mine, so I'm like, man, I can't wait to get mine done. That's how it's going to be. And it's been more than I've imagined, so it's like super badass. As you said, the only trigger that it knows, w yeah. that it uh, tells it that it's in reverse is because it has to change the screen, right, to an yeah. R. So there's an output on the monitor inside the the interior, uh -huh. like the cluster you see. Can we take a look at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How funny is that? Like, so, this is really such a crazy. neat little thing. Yeah. So when I put it in, uh, 
like reverse, uh -huh. you see the R, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. But there's a trigger that goes from this unit to uh, basically whatever you need in the ECU. There's an output. So I use that output to power a relay. And then from the relay, it sends power to that speaker. How funny is that? Yeah. So it's like, and also reverse research. lights. And the reverse lights. Yeah. Too. Huh. So it's all on the same circuit. Can we take a look at the engine bay? Yeah. yeah. Jeez. I mean, the engine bay is like what you saw on the GS. They're, they're nearly identical. I try not to do anything crazy. If you just pop the hood, what would people even know? How much different does it look versus like this uh, NA2J, well, you I'll know? Well, I'll tell you what, the 1J VVTi looks more at home than the original 2J GE VVTi ever did or ever will in this car. That car actually looks more factory because we were able to connect the intake pipe to the factory airbox. Oh. And I actually had an airbox. So if you look right here. Yeah. Actually, did you have the factory airbox? I did. You did? I did. Chopped up and I just oh. had on the inside. But this one actually still retains the... Um, Oh wow! <laughs> Factory air filter. Really? Yeah. See, that is so fancy. Yeah. Okay, so are you eventually gonna try to do the same thing on that try. one? I just didn't have the right bend for the intake tube to the air box. Mm -hmm. So once I get that figured out, I'll, I'll do that. But yeah, that's what I wanted to do on my car. Yeah. Just so when people pop their head, they're like, "Oh my god, is this like?" Yeah. OEM? Well, it's it's functional too. It could. Yeah. It's functional because look. Right, the right, air is right. coming in here, yeah. right? And it's getting forced into the intake. Yeah, and this yeah. still has a function too, although it's kind of hacked up right now on the backside, but it's still gonna guide air through here, guide it into the intake. Um, I, stock uh, batteries still, just yeah. stock so many things. You got a Koyo radiator, yeah. right? Koyo radiator, great intercooler core. What a lot of people don't notice is that I'm missing a brake booster. Mm. Um, and, I, and the reason why I did that was because the IS engine bay is already tiny as it is. It's so tight, I can barely get my hands through anything. So just to create a little bit more space, I took out the booster. And that's where I put the, you know, the factory power steering reservoir tank and just made it cleaner. So how does it, is it just manual brakes? Or? Yeah, it's basically manual brakes, which is what I like anyways, because that's what I've been used to doing, driving on the race car, the tracks. It's more analog and I don't have to re rely on you know, what the booster is actually going to be doing hmm. in the case that it fails. Engine management, I'm using a Link G4 Plus, uh, which was actually originally a package deal through excessive manufacturing and uh, Panic Mate. But now Panic Mate or Matt and Mark, they do their own harness. Um, this is actually utilizing a factory harness, but on our GS build, um, they made us a one-off custom plug and play harness that still retains all the OEM functions, amenities, um, climate control and all that. So eventually I'll go ahead and do that only because a lot of the couplers are getting old and kind of fragile. And if you can see right here, like, look at this guy, it's already like breaking. Right. Yeah. But the OEM replacement harness kit that they make replaces all that using factory couplers. So but, like everything's there. Like if you, if you want to do this exact build, I can write you a whole list of what you need to buy and it'll be so easy to do. It already blows my mind that everything works too though. Yeah, right, no, like no the, check engine yeah, no check engine light, the, all the gauges work. Yeah, fuel level works, temperature gauge works. Tachometer. Tach works, speedometer works, even with the Samsonas. What? Yeah, yeah. How, how, so how did that, how did you even get it to work? I mean, it's a trade secret. No, okay. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> so doing a lot of research, there's different ways to pick up speed signal, right? One of the ways is ABS sensors. So instead of getting, getting the speed signal from the transmission, I just hacked it up so that the speed was coming from the ABS wheel speed sensors. That's incredible. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. So body-wise, yeah. what else have you done? So these are well, over these fenders? These are Ascura Garage from uh, Russia. A lot of those Russians love IS300 or Altezza platforms. So they offer a lot of variety in terms of you know, what you want to do in the exterior. It actually comes with a full replacement rear quarter and door panel. Oh, okay, so yeah. this. So this, yeah, is, is one big panel that goes over your factory door. So if it's a purpose-built race car, I would actually gut the whole metal panel on the inside, but this is a street car, so I wanted to keep mm. some sort of- And then of the side skirts? Strength. The side skirts, rear bumper, front bumper, that's BM Sports. Okay, yeah. got it. And then this wing, it's actually one of my favorite features of the exterior is the Big Country Labs or BCL fuselage, which is one of their newest additions to their lineup. I love this so yeah, much. Normally this little gurney flap. Crazy, um, big, you know, big stance, gigantic end plate wings, but they decided to go with something a little bit more subtle. Yeah, no, big, this looks great. A little bit more. I mean, subtle is not even going to begin to describe this wing, but uh. yeah, it's a, it's a different street style look. 
that I was kind of going for. Uh, I, honestly, I mean, if you don't really know what you're looking for, this kind of is a little bit subtle until somebody's um, lying next to you at the stoplight, and then they just <laughs> yeah, they hear the large, the the really loud clunk. Yeah. So tell me about the wheel and tire combo. Yeah. So this wheel is a. Uh, Originally, I run the Razor or Gramlice 57 FXZ, but I just went drifting recently and I ran out of tires, so I put my spare 57 Transcends on, also by Gram Lights. Um, these tires are these cheapies that my uh, co-partners like to use. They're not the best tires in the world, but they last a long time and they're very cheap, so tossed it on. This front wheel setup is not my setup. Behind this wheel, I actually have a full pro-level steering locket from Wisefab. And my original wheels that I had on, the 57 FXCs, didn't fit because the Wise Fab kit actually pushes out the, the tread by a lot, like mm. almost three inches. So these are my temporary fronts. Um, so yeah, Streetcar, Wise Fab Pro Level Locket, Samsonas, full interior, AC radio, 1JZ. That's my recipe for a uh, proper streetcar. Yeah, no kidding. I, I just haven't seen one done like this. You know, you've. I've seen the race cars. Yeah. I've seen the ones that are just full on drift cars mm -hmm. with no amenities at all, right? right? And I've seen the show cars. Yeah. I have not seen anything like this. And it's pretty refreshing. I mean, we, we like to drive. We like to drive it on the street, you know, and why not build something that you actually could enjoy on the street? AC, you know, stereo system, full interior, but also keeping it kind of low key. But mm. yeah, just, you know, just having fun out here. Yeah, can we take it for a rip? Yeah, 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 of course. Let's do it. Yeah. Damn. All right, so we're gonna go for a ride in this thing. You can I can drive. I drive it too? Yeah. Dude, so that means I'll I'll have driven the car that inspired you, and then I get to drive this too, which is hilarious. <laughs> I think that's so funny. Which, by the way, that R34 is that probably one of sick. probably one of the fastest cars I've ever driven. Oh really? What, yeah. what, what, like I drove it in Tokyo. It? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But he's in Canada, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he ships it over to drive around in Tokyo during nice. Auto Salon, and Jesus that was Christ. that was the last event that we ever did international. Oh, really? Before the shutdown. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was just an honor to be able to feature that car and drive it. So, yeah, yeah that that was a fun one. Yeah, if you're yeah. watching this, yeah. hey, you were my inspiration. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm sick. What's this crankshank? Oh yeah, this I'm is gonna take this to. Uh, I take this out with me. All this is beyond me, man. Just all the things that you've done. Yeah, this car is. I don't even. Look at this. Look at this. I, this sound is the best part. The kunk. Yeah. Yeah. I'll turn down the radio for you. But yeah, full AC. Everything works. Jeez. This is a dream AC car, works. sir. This is a dream car. Is this really a dream is. car for you? I'm. I have one of these, and this one's definitely dream car version. <laughs> uh, amazing. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> that was See, so loud. It sounds like it's broken, but it's oh really not. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Is, what does your Samsonas rep say when when you tell them that you put it this in a street car? Well, so. Paul at Burkong, which is their U.S. distributor for Samsonas, he's been always helpful of all my builds, especially coming from the 86 to the Supra, because this transmission actually was in the Supra. Oh, it was. It so it had Formula Drift miles in it. Yeah, yeah. It oh. had a full season of 2020 COVID Formula Drift miles on it. Oh. Yeah. So what transmission is in your Pro Car now? The so Com that car. Pro Car has a GeForce GSR now. Oh, okay. Because these boxes are, of course, pricey. And it was cheaper to buy two GSRs instead of one Samsonas. But the only reason why this this thing is in here is because I blew out second gear in the factory W series, and I didn't want to spend you know two three thousand on a mediocre like CD 9 or a replacement W series because we all know those are gonna break again. Yeah. And I wanted something that was bulletproof. And to fulfill my childhood dreams of putting a se sequential in a streetcar, it was just a perfect timing. Right. I also have fashion Whoa! <laughs> Wait, <laughs> oh my god, you don't even need to use that clutch! Look at his foot! <laughs> what? And you're in six gear, so... Yeah. Wait, with a G-Force, is that's yeah. only four speed though, right? Yeah, G-Force so, GSR is four speed. Are you gonna miss the two extra gears? 
No, um, the good thing is I have a winner's quick change on my Supra, so I can change the gear ratio to suit the track or you know the, the RPM changes or whatever. So just for that certain track. This one I didn't want to do that, so I put this <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> This is the coolest thing! I, I'm, I'm, uh, my mind is blown. I, I'm so blown away right now at, at how casual you are. You know, like, I, I love it. And on, on top of that, on top of that, guys, look, look, this man is watching TV. This man is watching TV while we're, we're just... Oh, That's I like just it, 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 it is. AC works. AC is blowing cold. Yeah. For, for those of you guys who don't know, when you go to Japan, when you're stuck in traffic on the highway or even on the street, you look over, everybody's just watching TV. That's all they do. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they're able to do it. I mean, it's not like I'm like constantly watching. It's just good background noise. Yeah, yeah. And a uh, very JDM-ish. Yeah, it's very JDM. But this is, wait, so you just pull it back to shift up? Yeah, it's got a load sensor on the shift linkage inside the trans tunnel that cuts the ignition. So dog, the way dog rings work is you need to have no power to fully disengage and then re-engage right it. here. So, but it, it, it's like, it, so basically, it's so instant. I can't believe is, how yeah, fast like it shifts. It's like thousands of a second that's cutting the ignition and that's all that's needed to disengage the dog ring. No way. Yeah. And then you huh. can always set those parameters too. Like, like, for example, if I wanted to only shift above like 5,000 RPM, and set the window of shifting to like maybe three hundredths of a second or something. Like all that is programmable through the Link ECU. Jeez. Does it? Does it? Do you try to like move it over and put it in first when you're driving no, it? No, but you know what's funny? Because I'm so used to driving this in a race car, I am always constantly looking for my hydro hamper. Oh, <laughs> so like, you, because reverse, to I'm stop. Like, yeah. Right. Because when you're in your race car. When you need to stop or yeah, slow down, use my you use your handbrake. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So sometimes I'm like, oh wait, I forgot that it's right. But you do have to uh, use the clutch to start, right? Yeah. So it still has a traditional clutch. You know, it's a triple plate clutch, but it still has a clutch. I can still disengage the clutch, put it in gear. So obviously, when I or start to roll forward, I need to slip the clutch to get it going. And then once it gets going and the dog rings are engaged, I can just use the flat shift feature. Do you need to use the clutch to put it back into neutral? Uh, you do. So every downshift, it's recommended mm. that you use the clutch only because, I don't know, for whatever reason it is, it damages the dog rings more. Got it. On decel going into different, uh, going into lower gears. Huh. My mind is just so blown right now. Like, first of all, the AZ does work amazing. Just, it's just so rowdy. <laughs> the whole car shakes when you shift. I love it. And that sound. Yeah. Sounds like a race car. Have you heard what it sounds like from the outside? Is it really loud from the outside? Um, so I was asking, you know, a couple guys that were following me and they were like, no, 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 we don't, we don't hear it. But yeah. then some guy spotted me on the street and was filming my car and all he hears bah, bah, bah. And I guess when I'm like on it, on it, yeah. it like backfires like crazy. Uh... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Should we start heading back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I'll put oh, you in the seat. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 I'm excited for this. The what? I'm excited. I'm gonna drive. Oh. 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 I'm so blown away right now. The only now. thing is the seats don't slide. Okay, no worries. They're fixed. Okay. Well you're taller than me, so you should be alright. I should be fine. Yeah. So uh to Are get, get it in first now? I just pull yep, it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And then just Pay attention to the indicator. Got it'll it. Tell you which gear you're in. Got it. All right, and then now I can just. Yep. Oh. 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 <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> okay. All right. So then now. You can make it right here. All right. <laughs> like. This car's <laughs> low too. I don't want to scrape. Yeah, just pull back. You don't need the clutch. <laughs> that is so weird feeling. Oh my god. I just, I'm literally only going 25 miles an hour and I'm having so much fun. This is better than a manual transmission. It is. Make oh a, my god. Uh, if you can make a left, oh, let's make a right. Okay. Yeah. 
I'll make around. two rights. Yes, I'll make two rights. So I'm in first. Yep. So okay, just pull it out on the traffic. Right at the light. Yeah. I'm it just doesn't feel right for me to not use the clutch. It just doesn't feel right. I'm like hovering over it, trying to like hit it, but it just doesn't feel right at all. Get on it a little bit more this time, okay. and then pull it. Oh my god. Ha! It feels like a video game. The joy in that. Oh my goodness. I just can't believe how good it is. Actually, the brakes don't feel too bad either. It's not that bad, right? Yeah, so yeah. It's got whip W5s, uh -huh. so they're kind of aggressive for the street, hence the reason why they squeak so much. Right, but do they need to get warmed up at all? Uh, for track driving, yeah, you kind of you kind of want to put a little bit of heat through them before they finally. So for neutral, oh, you got to pull lever, this, pull up, push up. Yeah, okay, push up. got it. Neutral. Uh, this is so. This dope. is some race car. This, so <laughs> this is some race car shit right now. I just, I'm so blown away. Okay, so yep. back. Like think there's a lot of thinking going on right now. Just incredible. Wow. I'm so glad that I got to drive both cars. Yeah. Like I got to drive uh, Char the Charles Wong's R34. Uh, he, uh, he didn't. That that wasn't programmed in, you know. Uh, okay. So I did have to use the clutch, but yeah, it was yeah. still just straight. insane. I just can't believe it. So you must just be when you're driving this on the street. You must just be so every time I enjoying yourself. Yeah, I feel like I'm about to initiate into the next corner oh. every time I accelerate. Should I make it right here? Yeah, you can make it right here. Okay. So clutch in third. Actually, next one. Sorry. Oh, next one. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try the same thing later when I get in my car and then just like <laughs> blow the transmission. <laughs> uh, okay, right here. Yeah, you can make it right here. Okay. Just incredible. Okay, neutral. Oh, I, I have to like say it in my head <laughs> as I'm doing it. It just takes so much getting used to. Oh wow! It really feels like I have my race car on the street, but with like full interior, yeah, AC, full stereo system. Jeez, like all the luxury. I just amenities. like even this stuff, all the suede here. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, did you get new old stock stuff, or is this the no, stuff this that came with? No, this is all factory. It? Yeah, like I, uh, I intentionally looked for something that was decent in the interior. No tore up seats. That's, that's really going to take some getting used to, seriously, like, I cannot believe how rowdy it is. <laughs> and, you know, this, how much power does this make? Have you done this? 280 wheel. That's it. Two, 280 is all you need, really. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I, I wish I had, I, I will, my goal is 350 for now. Okay. Just because a little bit more, I can run grippier tires. Right. Because there are some guys out there on track that have like, you know, faster cars and I want to be able to keep up with those guys like Kazuya. Yeah. He has this 180 that has like 400 horsepower and right. I, I struggle keeping up with him at Napa Valley Speedway. Yeah, but he doesn't have a but sequential. Yeah, he doesn't have a full sequential. Yeah. Jeez. It's just so rowdy. The only thing about a sequential on the street is you can't go from like 6 to neutral, you know what I mean? You have to right. like roll through the gears. Well, I mean... It's the same way when you're using like a tip or a, a, a DSG. Yeah, right? yeah, same thing basically. Huh. Yeah. Awesome. Do I like really backlit out oh, there? I <laughs> yeah, thank you for letting me drive this thing. This I thing want everyone cool. to feel the joy of having a sequential street. Oh, there's joy. <laughs> there's joy. A lot of joy happens. So, like the fuel, everything works. Everything works, yeah. Everything is accurate. See, this time I didn't even think, I just, for whatever reason, I just hit it, and it, like, it, it's starting to become a little more natural. Yeah. It's intimidating at first. Yeah. Because all the sounds it makes, the clunking. Huh. 
I wonder if they potentially could make one that doesn't have straight cut gears that would be quiet. Um, I'm I sure mean, they have like helical cut gears right. for some applications, but straight cut gears are stronger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, really quiet too. Yeah, huh? it's pretty supreme. Ah, supreme has to be. Yeah, I, I don't really hear it that much at all. I see. Dude, this is so rowdy. <laughs> it's just so rowdy. I just think of that. That was really life changing. I mean, as a car enthusiast, yeah. you know, I, I love to be able to experience so many different things. Mm -hmm. And and as you have, too. Yeah, I, I have. I mean, to the point where I, I had a chance to drive Charles, you know, his, his R34 in yeah. Japan, which that was already insane. But um, t this is honestly more of a street car version, yeah. I feel like. And uh, it's to drive it on the streets where I grew up around here just too cool that was it just almost, too cool yeah and then you start to forget like what it actually has like this has a full-blown pro level wise stop kit up front too which you probably didn't even realize yeah I, you know the steering did feel really really precise and tight yeah. too but that's because it has like, all spherical bearings but normally people think like oh why stab on the street i don't know that's overkill might be kind of sketchy but totally drivable it's like you know, I've never really separated from the fact that, like, I want it to be streetable and comfortable and luxurious and nice and, you know, retain all the amenities, so. That's, I mean, that's. It's never a... ending, though. Like, I'm not done with it. Yeah, like, I can't wait to see the next evolution. Um, but, yeah, thank you so much for having us. We are going to shoot a bunch of stills. But, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much. See ya. <laughs>